Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Friday, January 26th, 2024, and today we are going to be talking about Nikki Haley's campaign that is about to come to a close. After the New Hampshire primary results, Nikki Haley said on her campaign stage that she congratulates Donald Trump on winning, but will not be dropping out of the race. That she will be moving forward in full speed ahead into South Carolina and to other states as we look at this 2024 primary season. Now, I'm sure you can tell from the title of this video that that this is all about why Nikki Haley needs to drop out, at least for her own political future. Now, there are different ways of looking at this, and I think that one major thing is that the Democratic Party would like this primary to go along as long as possible, but realistically speaking, Nikki Haley has no mathematical pathway forward and in fact is losing by extreme amounts nationwide. Now, in New Hampshire, the margin that Donald Trump defeated Nikki Haley was somewhat hopeful. While Nikki Haley's campaign was at one point in time hopeful that they might win the overall primary, they set expectations on election day that she would perform nearly how the polls were predicting, and she actually did better than what the polls had predicted, but not better enough. You see, Nikki Haley lost the state of New Hampshire still by double digits to Donald Trump. This was the one state where Nikki Haley had spent a lot more time in than Donald Trump, and arguably a lot more people on the ground and a lot more resources in this state. New Hampshire was one that Donald Trump didn't need to win. He had already won Iowa's caucus, not to mention Nikki Haley's third place performance in the Iowa caucus, and New Hampshire was supposed to be this revitalizing primary for her campaign. But unfortunately for her, that simply did not happen. While she did outperform expectations, the headlines that were taken away from this very obviously were still that President Donald Trump won. Not the place you want to be if you are Nikki Haley. And so when we look at that and put that into perspective, Iowa didn't go so well. She came in third place. New Hampshire, she came around 11 points behind the former president. So what's forward? Why is it time for her to drop out now, especially with her home state coming around the corner? Well, one thing that I would definitely say on the home state part is that South Carolina doesn't seem to love Nikki Haley. You see, she's facing a lot of problems with multiple representatives here endorsing Donald Trump for president. Senator Tim Scott, who was only in that Senate position because he uh, was chosen by Nikki Haley when she was governor, also endorsing Donald Trump. You are finding that a lot of things here uh, are really difficult for Nikki Haley's performance in South Carolina. He already led leading into this primary even before he won Iowa, even before he won New Hampshire by over 30 points. The average here has him up by 30.2%. And Ron DeSantis, Chris Christie, Ramaswamy all have small pockets of support, a lot of it of which is going back to Donald Trump now that they have departed from the race. And so Nikki Haley at 22% in her own home state really puts things into perspective because it means she isn't as adored as she should be in this state. And I think that is her fundamental problem. South Carolina, like New Hampshire, should be this big beacon of hope for Nikki Haley. One that could indicate maybe a strong primary performance. But it's nearly three weeks away, four weeks away, until the South Carolina primary. And there really isn't that much hope for Nikki Haley to improve between now and and then, especially if she's already polling at just 22% in her home state. Now, what happens in between New Hampshire and South Carolina is the Nevada caucus, which just by the registration of her campaign, Nikki Haley will not be on the ballot in the state of Nevada. And it's a bit of an interesting scenario, so I'll break it down to you very, very quickly so it's understandable because I think it was very confusing when I first understood what happened here. But essentially, the Democratic state legislature, if you don't know this about Nevada, it is extremely gerrymandered. Democrats have a supermajority there. Because the Iowa caucus went so awry in 2020 on the Democratic side, they sort of abdicated from uh, the caucus system, right? What they did was they decided to move everything to a presidential primary. There would be no more caucuses, and Nevada would hold their elections the way the legislature determined. However, the Democratic Party was on board, the Republican Party was not. And so the Republican Party said, we want to hold a caucus. The GOP uh, you know, was very, very adamant that we want to do things our way, and no Democrats are going to tell us how we're going to go. And so the legislature decided that they weren't going to fund that caucus, they would have to hold it independently, but would still run a presidential primary. Get this, two days before the scheduled Nevada primary uh, Republican caucus. And so the GOP uh, state party chair made an ultimatum to the candidates running for president that if you registered for the primary, which a lot of people describe as a beauty contest, you cannot run in the uh, caucus 
which is the real deal. And that's because the caucus determines delegates, the primary largely can determine headlines two days before the caucus. And so I think what the calculus here was that Nikki Haley was going to have, uh, you know, any type of impact that would be had by maybe getting 20%, 30% in a Nevada caucus is not higher than maybe getting a headline that says she wins the Nevada Republican primary. Because not everybody is going to know that there are two elections going on in this state two days apart. And so I think that looking at the New Hampshire primary, or Nevada primary, Nikki Haley will be on the ballot there, but is barred from the caucus ballot, which means that Donald Trump will be the only one on the Nevada caucus ballot. So you see here that Donald Trump already leading into this election had 73% support with everyone else in the race. They all have left. Now it's going to be more like 99% because who else is there to vote for, right? Everybody else has pulled their name from the Nevada caucus besides no name candidates. And maybe you'll see some defections of support or, you know, none of the above style type of votes, but not necessarily because that's not how this is going to go. Donald Trump is going to get at least 90% of the vote in the Nevada caucus, which means he gets 100% of the delegates. And so in terms of delegate count, Donald Trump will get this right now. But she might get a headline that says she wins the Nevada Republican primary. It will be very short-lived, and I honestly think very much downplayed by the mainstream media, unless they're still going to you know, push forward with this horse race model of projection. But this primary is over, right? What happens between New Hampshire and South Carolina is that Nikki Haley wins zero delegates. She has no chance of winning a single delegate between now and then. And you have the U.S. Virgin Islands Caucus. She also is not expected to do well there. And so all around, you know, the country. You're going to see major headlines here that Donald Trump is dominating, dominating, dominating. Oh, Nikki Haley won a primary, dominating, dominating, dominating. And it actually doesn't get much better because when you see that everybody has dropped down, a lot of the consensus here from some of the more pro, you know, anti-Trump Republicans and pundits is that there's going to be a rallying call. There's going to be a consolidation of the anti-Trump support around Nikki Haley. And believe it or not, that isn't happening. The national numbers now show that in head-to-head -head matchups, the first two polls that we have seen since the departure of Ron DeSantis, and you know, the first four polls we've seen since the departure of Vivek Ramaswamy, is that Nikki Haley polls at just 18 and 19% nationally in a head-to-head -head race. Even the voters here that seem at one point in time when the majority of the Republican Party was in line with other candidates are now nearly fully backing Donald Trump. And you see in the most recent poll, I think the most damning one for Nikki Haley that really should tell her that it's time to leave this race is that in a head-to-head -head matchup, according to Morning Consult, Donald Trump gets 81% support. Nikki Haley gets 18%. And so when I see this, when I see this 63-point advantage, at a low point, a 45-point advantage, I'm laughing at it, because it is crazy to think about that when you look at the numbers eight years ago today, Donald Trump was up by just 16.9%, and that primary was nearing being over. Just 12 years ago, Newt Gingrich was up by 37 and the primary turned around. That was good for Mitt Romney, but the lead was no longer than four points. Gingrich might have been up, but to what extent? Four points? Laughable in today's 57.7% margin, and we're so infatuated by the idea, or Nikki Haley rather is, and her campaign infatuated by the idea that this election might be competitive. You see, it could have been, but it's not, and it won't be. There is no mathematical pathway forward, and it means that this is just going to be prolonging the inevitable. Now, I already told you that I think the Democratic Party wants this to be prolonged. I think they're right in thinking that, and I will talk about that in a future video, because I think there's some political calculus behind it, behind continuing this idea that the primary is continuing. Because for one, I think they very much do want to run against Donald Trump, but they want Nikki Haley to tag and drag him down as much as she can until, you know, they actually end up with Donald Trump being the presumptive nominee. And I think what you are seeing is that the RNC is having, you know, a visceral reaction to that, now trying to just violate violate what the primary process has undergone and just make Donald Trump the presumptive nominee without doing anything else. The RNC chair has officially called, uh, Ronna McDaniel has officially called a Nikki Haley to drop out. And so you have all these things here where Nikki Haley is saying, I'm staying in the race and everybody else is saying, get out of the race, including Donald Trump, who went on a very, very long, you know, very, very long rant against her in his New Hampshire victory speech uh, on Truth Social, continuously calling her bird brain. I mean, any chance that she is the VP nominee seems to be completely thrown out the window. A year ago, I would have told you it's going to be Trump and Haley or Trump and Nome. Today, I think it's more like Trump and Stefanik than anything. Uh, but Nikki Haley, I think, really had a time where she could have been 
the vice presidential nominee, but her refusal to get out of the race, and not to say that she has to. Anybody is free to run. I mean, we've seen Marianne Williamson, who is now dropping out of the race, but she's been in the race polling at no higher than 3-4% nationally, and so when you see numbers like that, and you see, sure, she could theoretically stay in the race. But now let's move on to the side of besides what this means for the GOP primary, if she doesn't have a pathway forward, what is the calculus behind staying in the race? Because politicians rarely do things that would hurt them unless they have an ulterior motive. And I think Nikki Haley doesn't think that this is going to, this is going to hurt her. She isn't this Chris Christie, I hate Donald Trump type of candidate. She's probably going to endorse him and kiss the ring, as Ron DeSantis would put it. She is going to endorse him, so why is she still in this race? And I think we have to look ahead a little bit further than 2024 into 2028, where we are now starting to see the direct impact of these candidates who have made names for themselves in this primary season. Because 2028 data, we never really had. But if I was to guess it a year ago, I would have never told you that Vivek Ramaswamy would be rivaling, and in fact in third place, rivaling Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis in third place nationally as somebody who was a nobody a year ago. He's out. He's beating out Tucker Carlson, Greg Abbott, Glenn Youngkin, Carrie Lake, J.D. Vance, Josh Hawley. Think about these names, right? Brian Kemp, Byron Donalds, Tom Cotton, Elise Stefanik. How in the world is Ramaswamy at 18% and everybody else is at 1, 2, and 3? And that's because he ran in this primary. He made a name for himself, and I think Nikki Haley is really trying to position herself to not be that second-place candidate to Ron DeSantis, because she actually will now be definitively the runner-up. But she's trying to build out that name recognition and continue to win support, not for this election, which is why I think she has been so tempered previously on Donald Trump, and now she's going down a different pathway of really, really railing against him. But prior to that, she had been kinder to him, had been less combative against him, still criticizing him, but still keeping him at arm's length. However, that is out the window. And so I think Nikki Haley is just trying to build out this, you know, surrounding of or personality support for 2028, where you're going to see her sort of emerge as this new GOP figure, personality, whatever it might be. Donald Trump, who has been the dominating personality in the GOP, Nikki Haley will serve as the contrast to that. And it will be the Trump or Haley party. And now we're very obviously seeing that this year's electorate wants it to be the Trump party. But what about 2028? She could very well position herself to be the front runner in 2028. The question is now, how does she not piss off enough people that she doesn't lose 50% of the electorate at default in 2028? Because maybe if she's seen as somebody who is contributing to Joe Biden's election victory in 2024, if he does defeat Donald Trump, a lot of Republicans will turn to her and say, you should have gotten out in the race when you were never going to win. You should have done what Ron DeSantis did. At one point in time, according to the betting odds, too, I think you'll find this very interesting. At one point in time, Ron DeSantis was well positioned for the election. I think we can pull up uh, the betting odds for the GOP primary. One point in time, too, Ron DeSantis was beating Donald Trump in the betting odds. In fact, a year ago today, we can actually take a look. January 26th, a year ago today, you know, Ron DeSantis was tied with Donald Trump nationally in terms of chances. And a year later, well, he's out of the race. And even at the beginning of 2023, Ron DeSantis had nearly a 51% chance at being the nominee. Donald Trump, just 28% in terms of these betting odds, right? So you're seeing that for a long period of time, Ron DeSantis, I mean, if you go back further than that, I know it says max, but you can see on Predict It and other, other uh, betting market uh, odd networks, you'll see that Ron DeSantis for a longer period of time, did have that lead. But for a while, you know, it was a DeSantis-Trump race, and it was a lot closer than it actually ended up being. And I find it so fascinating that this primary is being prolonged, but I think the ulterior motive around it is no bigger than 2028. I do not think Nikki Haley genuinely believes that she has a pathway forward in this presidential race. The only way this could happen is if there's some divine intervention from the court system that would make the RNC pull Donald Trump from the nomination out of concerns of electability. But I honestly don't see that being a reality, and considering the timeline of these court cases, that probably isn't going to happen. And so as Nikki Haley vows to stay in the presidential race, some would commend it, I would see it as something that could end up hurting her in a future election. I understand the political calculus behind it, but sometimes it goes too far. And now with new data that seems to indicate that nationally speaking, Ron DeSantis, sorry, not Ron DeSantis, Donald Trump is up with 81% support according to Morning Consult, up 45 points according to uh, Reuters and Ipsos. These are numbers that you simply cannot combat. 
and without her name on the ballot in the Nevada caucus and her losing her own home state by a predicted 30 point margin before all the drops out dropouts, what will likely be a 40 to 50 point margin. There simply is no reason I see for Nikki Haley to stay in the GOP primary race. The politicians are going to do anything they want. And I think at the end of the day, she will make the decision that is best for her. But I think looking ahead to 2028, the time is coming around where she needs to drop out. Otherwise, she may seem as someone who is benefiting Joe Biden and taking down Donald Trump, especially if he loses the election, which could cause her a lot of trouble later down the line, rather than if she just dropped out today or even yesterday, or maybe even a week ago. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already, and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch, and then a playlist for my 2024 Republican primary election analysis videos. This will probably be one of the last videos I make about the GOP primary. Interesting, but also not so much, because it's getting boring. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all later today.